Now, I'm sure that if you've been on social media constantly throughout this week, you may have come across a hashtag, Justice for Uwa. Even though this pertains to the grisly murder of a university student in Nigeria, it's also sparked outrage across the continent on the need to respect women uh, a bit more and not see them as sex objects. And this is a fight against rape and defilement. So this young woman, who is a female microbiology student uh, at the University of Benin in Edo State, was found lying in a pool of blood uh, at a parish. This was in a church. Now, she had gone there to study to prepare for her exams, and unfortunately, some men um, walked in, raped her, and hit her with a fire extinguisher. And unfortunately, she lost her life a few days after she was found by the church's security man, and she told them that she had been raped. Now, just uh, yesterday as well, there was a story that came up in Ghana about the mate who has been sentenced to 10 years in prison for defiling a two-year-old girl. Now, according to the story, he offered the girl two CDs uh, just so he could defile her. And some people uh, found him in a classroom um, doing that, and he was arrested. And it's been a lot of issues up and down. I mean, a lot of personalities have spoken against rape and defilement on the continent. But most importantly, there was a tweet that rang a bell. And this tweet um, said that maybe it's more about how we raise our boys to see women not as sex objects, but to respect them as much as possible. Before I even um, speak to a rape victim who narrates her story to us. I have in the studios Jennifer Ikuyama, who is a feminist activist. Good morning, and thank you for joining Good us. Good morning, Bella. And also, I have Echo McLean. He's an entrepreneur. Good morning to you. Good morning. We also have a specialist psychiatrist, and um, uh, he's also joining us via Zoom, Dr. J.P. Omojine. And he'll speak, I'm sure, more to the issue of psychology. And also, on the phone, we have a young lady who's about to tell us her story. She goes by the name Ruth. Hello? Hello, Ruth. Ruth, can you hear me? Yes, please, I can hear you. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. All right. I'm fine, thank you very much. And I'm glad that you're ready to share your story with us. Now, you are saying that you experienced or you have been raped before. When did this happen and how did it happen? Um, okay, um, it's, it's been, it happened twice um, after SHS. You're saying it happened, what, um, twice? Two times, actually. Wow. Yeah. After SHS and um, uh, two years ago, yeah. Okay, so tell me about when you were in senior high school. What exactly happened? Oh, uh, that was after, after school. Um, I had uh, completed SHS. Mm -hmm. So, yes, a friend introduced me to another friend, actually, to... Um, I'm, not, I'm not good with making friends, mm. so she thought she could help. So I did. I put myself out there, and mm -hmm. I got in touch with this fellow. Okay. Then who I assume I, is a yeah, guy? So I went to... Hello? Who I assume is a guy? Yes, please. Okay. Go ahead. So I went to um, visit him based on an agreement we, we, we came to. Mm. And when I went, we, we talked for a while, and <laughs> he started acting strangely. Mm. And the place, the way the place is, it's, it's quite big. So even if I had screamed, nobody would have heard me. Mm. And to find myself in that situation, screaming wasn't even an option. Yeah. And yeah, so all I had to do was cry and plead that he um, doesn't go through with what he wanted to do. Yeah. But then it didn't work. So wow. he had his way. With me. Did he try being violent in any way? Well, he pinned me down. I tried to fight back, just like the recent one, but mm. I couldn't overpower him. Wow. It, naturally, men are, men are stronger than women, so I, yeah. So, so I couldn't. After it happened, did you report this? No, I was so scared. I didn't know what to do. Because was it because he threatened I, you? Pardon? Did he threaten you? No, no, he didn't. He didn't threaten me. But then knowing what has been going on, the stigma and the criticisms and all that, when you come up, how to report such incidents, mm. I was quite scared. And I was afraid of what my family was going to say, what society was going to say. So 
Yeah. I don't want anybody to talk to, so I just kept it to myself. Oh my God. This is this is this is difficult. Um, this was how long ago? You said you had finished essays. How many years ago was this? Um, so like 11, 11, 12 years ago. 11, 12 years ago, you couldn't tell your mom, nobody in your family. You didn't even no, have a friend no. to confide in. No, 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 I couldn't. Wow. Okay. I couldn't. So, so you said it happened a second time. Yes. How did this happen? This was like last two years ago, mm -hmm. like I mentioned earlier. And um, this was a friend I knew from school mm -hmm. in SHS. So we agreed to hang out, and we did. But then he also, I don't know what happened. Okay. I don't know why you can, a woman can't be in the same room with a guy, just watch movies, talk, and, and it would just end there. But, but you so, know, be, because of what had happened before did you not think that being in the same room with a man could also lead to that possibility yeah because of that i stayed away for 10 years 10 11 years because mm. i was afraid yeah to put myself out there i was afraid to um like i said make friends so i was always by myself i'm always by myself okay i, I have a few friends yeah so, so after that, after 10 years or 11 years, I told myself, okay, this is the time. I mean, I should come out. I should put that behind me and move on with my life. Okay, so you trusted, life. So you trusted so this young man. People. You trusted so this young happened. man enough to know that he would not try anything, right? Was he, yes. you know, had he become a best friend? Were you dating? What was it that made you trust him? I didn't trust him. I wouldn't say I trusted him. I didn't trust him. Okay. But then, because of how he related with a couple of our friends mm. and how religious he sounded, wow. I didn't think that um, something like that could happen. This time so, around, did you report this other person? Yeah, this time I did. This time I had had enough, so I did. Mm. Uh, I reported to the Dr. Stewart, the one on the way to um, Dakuman. Okay. Hodoko, sorry, Hodoko. Okay. I reported the case to them, so I had to go to a series of um, events. I had mm. to go to the hospital. The first time I went to the hospital, they asked me if I wanted to report the case, and mm -hmm. I said uh, I, I said no because I was confused, disturbed. So this was. Okay, so, so, so it means you went to the hospital first. I about it, but I wasn't sure if I could go through with it. Okay. So when they asked me, I said no. So I went and came back later mm -hmm. to take the, the uh, examination and everything. Okay. Wait. And took it back. Explain something to me. You're saying that you went to the hospital first before you even yes. reported. Why did you go yes. to the hospital? What was, what was happening? Um, I went to the hospital because... Uh, the, the day after the incident, I called a friend, mm -hmm. a nurse, and I told her this is what had happened. And she said then I should quickly go to the hospital. They have some drugs for HIV okay. that can prevent HIV and gonorrhea, syphilis, the usual. So I decided to do that. Now, after reporting, what has been done to this young man? After I reported, they arrested him. Mm -hmm. Some few days later, and um, yeah, so we, we arrested him and we took him to the police station. And soon enough, the police asked me to pay. I don't know why. They asked you to pay the police? Yes, those who made the arrest. They what were for? for money. So I, I told my sister to give them something. Mm -hmm. Then I followed the other policeman inside. They mm. asked who was the, the victim, and I said it was me. And the man was surprised. He, has, uh, he thought it was, it, was, it was a kid. It was a defilement case. Oh, he and thought I you were a kid. child. Pardon? Wait, he thought you were a child? Yes, please. Okay. But, but okay, because, moving forward, how far is the case now? Has he been prosecuted? Unfortunately, you know, a lot happened during that time. A lot happened. The few family who knew about it were complaining, and they said we should take it out of court. The um, the uh, the latest brother was also pressuring 
that we should take it out of court. The very first day the guy was arrested, the brother contacted me and told me that I should put the case out. Wow. And I told him I can't do that. Uh-huh. I can't do that. But then, from, because from what my family, the few family who knew about it, well, from what they were saying, I realized that, yeah, it could be true because there's no, there's no money, there's um, the whole up and down. And, and, but the decision we made wasn't even because of that. It was the fact that this person, if I continue the case, this person was going to be in my life for I don't know how long. And but, I don't know uh-huh. how long I was going to uh, control my emotions and everything. Because yeah. it was quite difficult. I can I, imagine. I remember the number of times I stood in the bathroom when my clothes on and I couldn't take them off to take my bath oh my because God. I was scared something would happen. When I sit up, my legs are open, my a voice in my head tells me close it. So I quickly close my legs. It's like I'm always looking over my shoulders. Okay, R- Ruth, hold on. Have you been seeing a psychologist at all? Um, the police told me they'll provide me with one, but I didn't hear anything from them. So I haven't seen one yet. How have you been dealing with this then? Because if you're scared to even take your clothes off, then this is serious. Does your family know about this? You know, what are they doing to help? My family doesn't know. It's just a few of them about me who know about it. The rest don't. Wow. Yes, please. And, but I'm, I'm, I've, I've been working on myself because... I feel like there are a lot of women out there that need help. Absolutely. So they are the ones that give me strength to keep pushing every day because I feel like I have to be there for them. When I needed someone to be there for me, I didn't find that. I couldn't get that. So I want to be that for victims, for victims, sorry, for victims yeah. and be their confidants and all that. So I want to create that. My team and I okay. have decided to come up with a foundation to actually help women who have been abused and be there for them and help them bring uh, their perpetrators to to book. Definitely, definitely. And uh, we'll support you as much as possible. I really hope that if any psychologist is watching, they would reach out to you. We'll try and see if we can get you in touch with one as well. But you you do know that you can reopen this case, right? I I didn't know that. Okay. But Dovsu has also not followed up after they haven't followed up when I told them that um, the family, we decided to talk, uh, settle the case out of... Um, Do you still court. know where this guy lives? I know where he lives. You know I where do. he lives? Yes, do you please. see him? I mean, have you ever seen him ever since? No, not after that day. Not the, after the day we met the commander. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. This this is so, really tough, Ruth, and I don't know how you are living with this, but I think that this gentleman here needs then, to be brought to book. Yeah. You want to say something? I, I, yes, I want to say something. Um, the commander said, well, he asked me what I understood, um, what, how, what rape was. And I told him that it's when someone sleeps with you against your will. But mm-hmm. he said it was wrong. I said you were wrong. When the crime scene is disturbed, there are torn beads, torn clothes, and, and so on. So my, my, my question was, must there always be violence before someone can be, like an incident can be called rape? This is what when the commander when, when, said to like you. Must happen? Must I be beaten before it can be classified as rape? Okay, hold on. You did have a hospital report. Did it verify as well? Because I'm sure that they did some tests, right? Yes, I did. But then he said he wasn't seeing anything on the report. So there was nothing, uh, there was no case. Yes, that's what he said. Unbelievable. We don't go stay before on... that, Before that, the mm-hmm. boy's brother had going to see the commander. So I don't know what transpired between the Between two of them. them. Wow. Okay, Jennifer, um, I, I don't know what you have to say. I've heard some stories, but this is unbelievable. This is, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous, and it's a reflection of what we hear and we see on the ground so often. Every single chain that this girl had failed her. Everybody failed her. Her family failed her. 
The police system failed her. Social services failed her. The psychologist failed her. Everybody failed. Why is she struggling with this by herself? Mm -hmm. How dare that police officer tell her that rape is not sexual violence against your body? How dare he say that? How dare he belittle her like that? Yeah. How dare he rape her all over again? She is carrying this by herself. And her family, what a disgrace it is in Ghanaian families all over when we say, let's sort this out at home. It happened in a home. Mm -hmm. It happened where she felt safe, with somebody she felt safe with. How are you going to resolve this in a house? Yeah. There is such a complete and total lack of respect for her, for her body, and for the bodies of all women who go through sexual assaults and sexual harassment. Every single day, it's the utter disrespect and the disregard for our bodies, our autonomy. Even us saying no is a problem because now it's all these splitting of hairs. Did she say no before? Did she mm -hmm. say no after? Mm -hmm. Oh, how far ahead in the sexual act were they before she said no? No means no. If she says no, it is no. Yeah. Every, I can't, you know, listening to her story, it should not be something that horrifies me because I've heard it so often. But the pain in her voice, it's crazy. Every single case you hear, it is crazy because all the stories resemble each other. Mm -hmm. How people, let, like those closest to her, let her down. Because she expected to be able to tell them yeah. and, and for them to also to support. And they're like, oh, no, don't carry it far. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the problem with me with rape is that no rapist ever rapes once. It is never a one-time thing. So if he has raped her and they've let him go, go and do it in the house, it means he's out there free raping, raping somebody else. Person. And, you know, because now he knows how the system works, he knows how he can go and talk back door to any police commander, he will never be caught. How many women are going to be raped just because we're always trying to resolve things in the house? Yeah. We don't even resolve armed robbery in the house. Now, rape? Why are we always taking it to the house? Let me bring Echo in because we're talking about how men are raised to see women. And in this case, clearly, there's disregard for her, and that's why they'll do that to her. But looking at the situation from your point of view and looking at how you were raised, was there ever a conversation between you and your parents about how you should treat a woman as you grow up. To start with, I'd like to apologize on behalf of the male species to Ruth. This shouldn't ever happen to anybody at all. Now, coming to how I was raised, there was never once anybody ever spoke to me about rape. Nobody. Growing up, it's never been a conversation. The only thing they talk to you about is don't get anybody pregnant. Mm -hmm. But as to the processes that leads to you getting somebody pregnant, nobody ever brought it up. Did they even have a conversation about how you should see a woman as as more than just a sexual object. Was that there? conversation has never come up. Mm. And I think this fuels the culture of boys with boys. Mm. And the more we, we encourage this sort of behavior, more cases like this are going to spring up. And there are issues where people talk about parents or mothers especially defending their children. And from the narration she gave, the boy's mother went to see the commander. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes the raising up of boys I think it's the main issue here right now. Absolutely. Let, let me cross over to Dr. Omojine, and um, I'll just hear from you because I'm sure you listen to Ruth's story. You are very much aware of what's happening in Nigeria, in Ghana, and yeah, the rest it, of the world. This is a recurring issue, and it's not going to stop if we don't do anything about it. First of all, as a psychiatrist, what can you say about Ruth and how she's been dealing with this issue, the fact that she's been raped twice, and the fact that justice has not been served up until now well uh, over the last few days i can't count the number of times that my heart has been broken by some of the stories i've heard and it just makes me think how bad it must be for people who are living with this you know experience on their back all the time um the symptoms that ruth has you know talked about experiencing mm -hmm. because indeed these are symptoms are um, classic symptoms of a condition like post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, the thing about rape is it's maybe a one-time experience for whoever perpetrates it, yeah. you know, a few minutes of fun, but for a lot of the people who survive these experiences, it's a lifetime of pain. Mm -hmm. Rape is not so much about just sex as it is about power and domination and, you know, aggression, telling you that, you know, I can take whatever I want, 
you know, it doesn't matter how you feel about it. It doesn't matter whether you want me to or whether it's yours. I can do this and I can do that. Yeah. And the experience of rape for a survivor is a very, 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 very traumatizing one. Um, now, when a person experiences something like that, where they feel intense threats to their safety, to their lives, or you know, to their integrity in whatever way, it has such a damning effect that for years and years, people who experience this um, may have symptoms like what we call reoccurrence phenomena. So they may have dreams, nightmares, mm. or even episodes where it's almost like it's happening again. Yeah. And it can be triggered by anything that reminds them even remotely of the threat. Oh, yeah. She was saying that she, she gets very, very afraid or scared when she even opens, sits astride a little bit, opens her legs and she immediately has to close it. Yeah. She's afraid to take her clothes off. These are just subtle reminders of the experience. And that's how it can affect your everyday life. Another thing mm. is the depression, the anxiety and the, you know, stress that comes with it. It really um, makes them on edge all the time. It's like the threat is always there now. This mm -hmm. may be somebody who was, you know, very, very, very happy, happy-go-lucky, you know, going about their day, but then they live every day thinking and believing that anybody, any man could spring up out of it, could spring yeah. up out of anywhere and attack them. And another thing is, it really changes your basic way of seeing yourself, the world, and other people. These are your core beliefs. Mm -hmm. You know, how you generally see yourself as, you know, if you're fairly well balanced, you may consider yourself like an okay average person. You are relatively safe, but you need to take precautions. You are, you know, you have some worth. You may not be the most intelligent or the, the best person in the world, but you see yourself as, you know, good, you know, uh, and the sum of all things. Yeah. But when a person goes through an experience like this, it can be so damaging that it changes how they see themselves. One important thing is guilt. And unfortunately, a lot of survivors actually feel guilty. But why would they feel guilty? What wrong have they done? Now, now that's the thing. Because, you know, it, it's an unfortunate experience. But sometimes they start to think, you know, how could this have happened to me? Mm -hmm. Did I do anything wrong? Especially when this is somebody you trust. Yeah. Somebody you hold in high esteem. And especially when this person is, you know, not so mature, a very young girl. They start to, you know, attribute things to themselves in terms yeah. of blame. And another thing is the way society looks or deals with these cases. You mm -hmm. heard that she went to the police station and, you know, it turned into a completely different thing. I heard some stories the other day about two, um, a lady who went to two different police stations. Yeah. And, in each of the, and in each of those, because there were no signs of a struggle, like Ruth um, said, mm -hmm. They asked her, are you sure you didn't enjoy it? Because if you wow. enjoyed if you didn't enjoy it, you would have screamed. You know, rubbish like that. So these are things that also contribute to making them feel a sense of responsibility for these despicable acts. When the truth is that no matter what it is, no matter what you were wearing, mm -hmm. no matter where you were, no matter what you know, position you found yourself in, you can you never, should. ever, ever, ever be res held responsible for you know, your own rate. Exactly rate why is... I was asking Echo that it's, uh -huh. it should be more about how we raise our boys. Has exactly. there been an effort uh, towards ensuring that boys respect women regardless? Right now, um, it's largely been driven by the media. There's, mm. you know, this Me Too um, wave that has come and it's really, really, really helpful. And if you are um, so afraid of people speaking out against rapists, then maybe you have some skeletons in your closet and you should start cleaning them out. Because yeah. it's something that really needs to be talked about. Exactly. Um, I also, growing up, I never had that discussion. And I know that most men I grew up didn't. And in fact, most men today who are, you know, more um, savvy about things like this and mm -hmm. more um understanding 10 years back 15 years they back virtually everybody exactly their exactly. views on this were just as ignorant as you know okay. the average rapist so yeah it's good that this is this it's has come up. up and 
Yes, we, we will try to get you in touch with Ruth because I believe that she needs a lot more help, especially since she hasn't, um, you know, come across any psychologist who can run her through the process. And so just for time's sake, I know you have to get back to work as well. I'd like to say thank you to you uh, for joining us on air. And thank we'll definitely get you in touch with Ruth. And so that is Thanks, Dr. Omojine, and he is a psychiatrist at um, in Kumasi, pardon me. And so coming back to you, I mean, looking at all that he has said, What's the way forward? Well, Etanam is, is here. She'll just read a few comments. You are awake now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this, this, um, this rape issue, Bella, it's a very sensitive one. It, it, it just reminds me, seven years ago, I did a story mm. of a four-year-old who was raped by a 76-year-old man. So this yeah. was a contractor who had come from Kumase, mm. and he, he just, you know, bribed the grandmother of this child. And defiled, you know, the, the, and child. defiled the child. So if someone hadn't told us, we wouldn't have followed up on this story and would have been dead. So it's, it's a serious issue. It is, it is, absolutely. All right, so let's read some of your comments. Good morning. It seems rape cases in Ghana are getting out of hand they should find some other ways of uh, punishing offenders rather than taking them to jail uh, from Kwame Kade sometimes the way and manner the ladies dress lead to the issue of rape that's a non-starter please mm -hmm. <laughs> good mm -hmm. morning Bella it's a sad uh, it's a sad the sudden increase in rape cases these days I will encourage uh, victims to report cases without uh, fear or favor it is so sad Bella uh, me if uh, you do this to my daughter or sister, so I will fight you to the end of my life. Why should a rape victim pay for the arrest uh, by the police officers? It's very unfortunate, and things like this must change for the better. This is Elom uh, from Hawkeway. All I want to say is that my stepmother once trapped me for a guy to rape me so that I won't be able to continue schooling when pregnant. There I have to use touchlight to hit the man's head. So sometimes people or our own people are the cause of these things. Hi, I'm Tommy. Rape cases are becoming rampant in this country and it's high time we do uh, some, something about this. My girlfriend was raped by her own uncle. I'm Jeremiah from Malam. Please, I would plead that you would follow up the issue and also order call police station. They really and seriously brush off the vulnerable. Bella, I'm psycho inside uh nkz i think it's lack of poor parental control good morning bella most of these rapes are also caused by some of their ladies friends who plan with the guys to rape their friend ladies uh it's been going on in most of the schools watching from qatar david kweku Agbemava. Hi, TV3. I'm so impressed uh, on the topic. I was a victim too, and Ruth's story really broke my heart. We reported a rape case, and he told the victim's parents that it wasn't a rape case, but they should just take money. A man in our house raped a two-year-old girl and uh, was rushed to the hospital. Reports showed that the girl was raped, and when it was sent to the police station, all that the commander could say is that it wasn't a rape case, but they should just take the money and go home. Uh, let me take a last one. Bella, the story of Ruth is very sad and got to, uh, to and come to think of it, is the police protecting us or against us? I think it's about time those in authority need to check this. We are tired of hearing bad people going scot-free because of the money they possess. A lot of All messages, right. but we'd want to pause here because we don't have a lot of time. Thank you so much, Etonam. Thank you. And thank you to everyone who has sent messages. Just a quick correction. So we use defilements for minors. So anyone below 18 years is defiled, and anyone 18 years and above, you classify that as rape. And so that's just some education there. Ruth is still on the line. Let me quickly ask her something that um, she didn't touch on. So the first time you reported to Dovsu, um, I'm hearing that they asked you to drop the case so it doesn't bother you. Can you clarify that for me, Ruth? Ruth? Hello, Ruth? Ruth, can you hear me? Yes, I'm hearing you. Hello. Yes, I'm saying that, um, you know, I, I found out that when you reported the case the first time to Dovsu, they asked you to yeah. drop the case, right? Yes, please. Yes, Why? Please. Yes, please. Why? Mm. Um, why they asked me to take the case? Yeah, down? what was their reason for asking you to drop the case? That's what I'm asking. Um, the reason was they said they didn't have enough evidence okay. to pursue the case. Even though you had the doctor's um, report? Yes, please. Even though I had the report. 
And since the CID said he didn't she didn't bring any tone beads or tone clothes there. Yeah. They didn't they couldn't do anything about it. But this CID in question just sat down and asked what happened. She didn't even check mm. under what? the bed or anywhere to find any evidence. Yeah. Ruth, do you know the CID? I mean, can you identify all these authorities that you spoke to when you reported the case so that in case we should go to court on this matter, you can identify them? Yeah, I can identify the CID, yes. Okay, you have details of the CID as well. No, no I don't know her first name. Okay, all right. Thank you so much, Ruth. And we'll try and get you in touch with a psychologist to help you. And we'll follow up on this case with you, okay? Okay, thank All you. Right. Thank you so much. Okay, so coming back to you, I mean, um, to think that the authorities that should help us are the ones saying that there's no evidence and so you should drop the case. But I, I, I would think that Dostu is on our side. So once you report, they should follow through. I think it even comes back to the question that you were saying about how we raise our boys. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's also like a general thing of how we raise, how we are raised, girls as well as boys. Because in our society, as it is right now, um, women are raised or girls are raised to be seen as the property, the possession or the objects of desires of men. You know, even our sexuality is tied to what men feel about us, even how our bodies are, our shape, our body shapes and how we look mm -hmm. is tied to the, the male gaze, the male perception of us. And men are also raised or boys are also raised to take, 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 take. Oh, this girl, she's yours for the taking. You should do whatever you want. Your sexuality, you should sow all your wild oats. Even when you marry, you can have side chicks and girlfriends and whatever. So our society has basically made all women to be non-sexual beings and all men to be very sexual beings. So you've got this hypo and hypersexuality situation going on. So now we are raised like this. Which is why for so many men, even the concept of consent mm -hmm. is such a problem because they see that, oh, but you are there. Yeah. Yeah. And you are in the same room with me. Mm -hmm. And of course, if I want to have sex with you, why can't I? Can't I? Whether you want to or not, because I want to have sex, we are going to have sex. Yeah. That's what a lot of men think. Now, imagine a man like that is a police officer, mm -hmm. is a police commander. Imagine a woman who's also been raised to think that her body is not even her own. Her sexuality is not even her own. She's also a police officer. Yeah. You go and tell that person, I've been raped. The person's going to say, ah, but he's a guy. You should have just given in to him. Yeah. You know, you didn't struggle, so maybe you liked it. Forgetting, conveniently forgetting that we all deal with trauma and stress in different ways. Mm -hmm. Some fight, some run away, some shut down completely, yeah. you know? The after effect is basically the same. All these psychological traumas we go through, the physical trauma we go through. But the way in that situation, how we all deal with it is, is always very, very different. So, I mean, we're raising boys wrong. We're raising girls wrong. wrong. And yeah. they're all growing up and they're becoming people in authority who should help us. Mm -hmm. But they don't even know that what they are thinking is wrong. So they can't even help you appropriately. Exactly. You know? what, what do you have to say about people who comment like, okay, what were you doing in his room anyway? Or what were you wearing when you went to see him? Because if you weren't dressed like this, then I don't think this would have happened. As a man, how does this, you know, I mean, how do you feel about comments like these? Before, sadly, I used to share the same opinion. Okay. I would ask myself, I mean, if you didn't like him, he was groping you in the bar, why would you follow him home? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Knowing there's a possibility something more could happen. But then I've come to realize that these conversations sort of detract from the main topic. If there are no rapists, there'll be no victims. Mm -hmm. So the more we, we give light to these side comments, it's more like treating the symptoms rather than addressing the main sickness. Mm -hmm. You have a festering wound. Instead of finding medication to cure the wound, you are just dabbing it with cotton wool yeah. and spirit mm -hmm. every day mm -hmm. without actually giving proper attention to it. And I think this is because the whole system involved in the ecosystem of rape is broken. Yeah. Talk about institutions. First of all, the family, which is supposed to be the key place where we learn everything we know. Mm -hmm. Nobody talks about rape. But let's just take away rape and put in place something like murder. If I am a mother, I am a father, I'm a family member of a boy who just killed somebody, would I give the same attention and energy to them to get them away from the grips of the law as I would to rape? Mm. I mean, if you wouldn't look at your son who has just killed somebody and have a little fear in your heart, like this boy needs to be corrected, mm -hmm. but rather you are quick enough to pay money to mm. talk to somebody with mm. higher authority to get them off the hook, you are encouraging this yeah. culture. Yeah. And I think it's a broad spectrum. 
many people think um, think of rape as black and white. Yeah. It's either you're not raping or you're forcibly you've 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 used violence to have your way with a girl. But when it comes to rape culture, I've just come to, and it's so funny. I am learning these things on social media mm -hmm. day in day out. Based I have so many friends comments, yeah. who I keep talking about, and even my passion for this didn't even stem from myself. Okay, it was based on a conversation I had with with someone, mm. and then she said, "I'm so sad about this because there's so much injustice going on, and why can't women just be women?" Yeah, yeah. we view rape as if I'm not forcing her, then it's not rape. Mm. But in between, there are so many things that could happen that could. Mm escalate quickly to rape and it's a slippery slope mm -hmm. the more you go it becomes a habit you may just start by by whistling and harassing them by, by text. and that's where it actually yeah, starts from right. passing yeah. sending new like, pictures yeah, to unsolicited new mm -hmm. pictures to, several girls complain all the time i was just there and somebody sent me pictures yeah. of their private parts in my dm exactly unsolicited mm -hmm. and then it moves from there you get to meet the person you start to grope Mm -hmm. You make them at, at a large event where probably, let's take Pent Hall Week. There are so many reports of people being groped, mm -hmm. being molested. Mm. But to you, the boy, I mean, my mother has never talked about it. My church only talks talk about murder. About yeah. My yeah. church talks about fornication, but not, nothing has ever been talked about rape. Mm -hmm. If it goes to the legal section too, there is no clear evidence. And as much as it's a moral issue where it has to be solved, there's also the legal aspect where yeah. due process has to be followed. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you can't fully blame the law because the system in itself was not designed for such an issue as rape and i'm happy it's come up now then if that's the case what's the way forward because we've been dealing with this for many years we centuries been, i mean for millennia yes. even in bi-biblical times we've yeah. been dealing with rape really it all it all just boils down to the education that needs to be done on men like from generation to generation um, how they have to be taught what consent is, mm -hmm. what boundaries are, that no means no. That when you send pictures that, you know, of your genitalia and, you know, she says, I don't want to see this, why, you know, some women say, I don't want to see this, don't send this to me, and then they get insulted and dragged up and down. The slut shaming has to end, the stigmatization has to yeah. end. But it all starts from that conversation on consent. On consent. Boys need to be taught and fully understand what consent means. Absolutely. Because this excuse of, oh, I was, the beast inside of me came out. You're mm. a responsible man, but when it comes to sex, you're a beast. Yeah, exactly. I mean, come on, the cognitive dissonance. Anyway, and, and, you know, the conversation will still continue, even off, um, you know, this show, because we all need to lend our voices to the voiceless and help them, because it's important. If they won't fight for us, we'll have to fight ourselves. Uh, in ways that will get people to respect women a lot more. And so parents, well, the honest lies on you to also start educating your children on what it means to be a woman and what it means to be a man, respecting a woman as well. And so Jennifer Akuyamwa is a feminist activist. Thank you so much for joining me. And Echo McLean is an entrepreneur. And so thank you both for joining me. And to thank Ruth, you. wherever you are, we're definitely going to try and help you as well.